welcome to this uh, second chapter, names and values. This is a most um, almost um, practic practice section. Uh, we like to um, have a look at the R object and assist. We already started a bit, but we we like to go a bit more in depth uh, on those things. Um, and for this reason, uh, it's, I think it's wor worthy to uh, have this chapter uh, on, on a side uh, because somehow um, we can see um, extra things. Okay, obviously, um, we, we can do everything within a chapter. Okay, so, but uh, what we did so far um, was uh, having a look at the uh, very basic object part, no? Um, here is uh, going forward, it's a little on, on the object. So la, uh, R is a, a functional language, but at the same time, it's a, a language which is object oriented. Uh, and um, so to identify an object, for example, so if we have, uh, we, we assign to X some values, uh, so let, let's, uh, for example, here, our vector X is equal to one, two, three. And then we use this function, which is when you want to, I don't know if you, you might know, if you put a question mark, uh, in front of the, the function and then the control end that you can see uh, on the, on the helper uh, pane what what uh, uh, what is the documentation of the function and so for example this object a d d r uh, it's uh, it's a function that allows you to find the memory allocation of objects uh, in their children okay what what does it mean uh, so if, if I have a look at this, at the output, uh, I see that this is basically the identity, um, the identification number of the R, of this R object. So we have created um, a vector with some object. And this, this object, you, you, uh, you imagine you are uh, building up functions or a package or a shiny app what you uh, might want to know uh, is uh, the objects that you put inside your tools that, it, that you are building. And there is a way to identify the object because each object has a, an identification number. And so this is uh, uh, to, to find its name, we can use this function, which is the address, okay? so. Uh, it, it, it's unique for the object. Um, what happened uh, here is um, that um, we, um, if we modify, okay, our vector, this address changes, okay, a bit, because it's a, a unique identifier. So if I assign, for example, this is a, um, if um, I assign Y, to, I mean, if I assign X to Y, okay, so now I have a new vector Y, which is exactly the same as X, okay. But then what I do is by um, changing, one value of this vector, like three, uh, and I assign it to four. Okay, so I use this double uh, brackets. Do you know, so you know about this, uh, those things there. Uh, because uh, to me, I don't know if you like to share your personal uh, experience, but to me, it's a bit difficult, so I find 
myself quite comfortable with caregivers. Okay, so based on I, I uh, started learning how with caregivers and still have some somehow difficulties within this bracket, even if I, I did, you know, other languages like basic, C, C, and, and whatever. But study was straightforward uh, and still have some difficulties to with this. So if I use just one square bracket, identify something. If I use two square brackets, one inside the other, I exactly identify that object. But this is somehow confusing. Not sure if you have the same thought. Sometimes it works or, or, or works or does, does it work all the times? Do you have any experiences with this, uh, with using this um, kind of um, uh, you know, for identify an object inside and an object. I find it quite confusing with those, as in I would probably have gone for a single square brackets to modify um, a vector thing in a vector, um, which then obviously behaves slightly differently because the object address then changes as opposed to it modifying it in place. Um, if we don't have the Y there, say we say you were just changing X. Yeah, okay. So I, uh, I have assigned X to Y. So now my Y is just equal to X. And then what's happen if I, uh, Assign, so x um, if I use just this uh, notation here, what this is actually identify the third element of the vector. What if I use just y and three? So in this, uh, this is what I. This is what I attempt to mean. So in, in this case, is exactly the output is exactly the same. Okay. And so uh, I like to pause here and leave this as is, and then we 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 will come back on those things. Um, so we can change if we don't have just a vector, but we have a data frame, so rows and columns. So now here the dimension changes. So you might want to have this as the num the, the row number and here the columns. Okay. Just uh, interrupt me or tell me what are you say. I'm uh, you know. If you are not aware, or I'm, I'm assuming that you know those things, is, uh, right? Is that right? Okay. So in this case that we have just a vector, these two notations release the same output. Okay, but not always you can switch between the two. Okay. Some sometimes they they are uh, if you don't use the double uh, uh, square brackets, you do not you. You are not able to ob obtain the up the output that you want. Okay, so let's go back to where we we say. So now we have a, uh, this third element of our vector, and we change it, its value, assigning four to the third element of y. Okay, so now our y has changed. Okay, it's one, two, four, instead it's one, two, three. If I have a look at the address, okay, of Y, and then I put the uh, semicolon and the address of X. Okay, okay. so they are, we have different uh, identification numbers. 
then there is a, a, a nice function. Okay, here I, I scroll down because here the, there is a, like a little specifications about how you should write objects, uh, assign name to the objects uh, in R. So uh, I, I think I'm going to, to scroll this a bit uh, and going forward. Uh, there is a, a nice um, function which is trace mem. Okay, if I uh, I use this uh, this this um, syntax cat trace mem x on our on our vector, it releases the the name of the object. Okay, which is uh, now. Okay, let's copy and do it here. Okay. X wasn't uh, one, two, three. Okay, so this is the address. And this is um, uh, another identification number because they are different. They are two, two different numbers, isn't it? So X is the same. Okay. So now it changes. So this is a, a random. Okay, so this changes, but this not. Because if I replicate this again, it is the same number. So if I now okay, uh, maybe we have a look at this uh, at this function. So give the address to the value of x to the value that x points to. So basically assign an address to one, two, three, the vector, to what is inside. But that is that is not the same as if I use uh, uh, trace man. Use trace man. Now I have the same value of bus here. Okay, so so those things, um, well, if I use cat, just as the same as this, now we have this, uh, all, the, all the same number. Okay, those things can be tricky when you want to add uh, identify something maybe you want to um, debug when you debug I don't know uh, and then uh, um, let's have a look at how uh, R trace the changes okay so as you as you remember uh, we we assign x to a new vector name y and then we change the third element of y to another number, such as 4. Uh, if we um, have a look at uh, the values, we can see this is even tricky. Okay. Now I'm not tracing, I'm stopping tracing x. Here I'm still tracing. And then if I add y, trace mem x and y. Oh. Okay. Okay, what what it did that? Yeah, 
do you follow do you do you have any you know suggestions uh, or things so basically what's happened um is that you can see that this passed from this uh, name uh, address to another one and this might be um so uh we will see why this is uh, this is useful okay Is it straight man? Okay. So, any thoughts? Any uh, on this page? Okay. Okay. So now, um, let let's. Think about the size of this object, okay? Imagine that I have a new object, which is X, uh, and I create this object with a random uniform. Um, so I run this X, so now X is a, uh, a bunch of random numbers. I want to see the size. So I use this object size function, and this is 8 megabytes. Now, if I may make a list, okay, I build up a list. And here is the first mention of, of a list. A list is an object of objects. Okay, but we, we go back uh, to that. Uh, and now we have three X objects inside the list. How do you think the, the size of the new object would be? Okay. See, it's, it's three times what it was before. Uh, and if we have a look at the size, we can see that it's not very changed. It didn't change it that much. Okay, and there is a, um, an explanation here that says that when you, um, when, is it? when you uh, basically use this um, um, list, uh, it can it, and they are the same, um, that, that's uh, the size of an empty list with three elements. Okay, uh, so basically, because it, it, it counts just one, uh, the, 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 the size of one list, of one of elements of the list, and then the, the, just the three elements uh, are not, uh, um, uh it's like uh it's like they are not considered okay because they are the same so they consider for just just one and then they are there are other two objects which are the same and so it's like they considered as empty uh extra elements seeing that they are the same as uh, as the first one if Fact, then it does the um, if we have a look at a, a new list, a, a new list, the size is just 80 bytes. Okay, so this is it, it's, it's very important because uh, when you uh, do packages or you know, functions and everything. And you, you need to look at making things run faster. And then they occupy less, less memory as possible. So uh, consider this. You are not doing three times of memory. You are not occupying three times of the memory. It's just um, uh, when, when things are the, the same. 
uh, one more uh, nice uh, um, uh, thing to, to look at is that these things changes if you pass into characters. So for the, uh, because X was was made of numbers, okay, doubles or integers, but not characters. Okay, if it's if we are dealing with characters, then things change. So your vector is now a vector of characters. You ever look at the object size, it just for example, 136 bytes. But then if I replicate this uh, vector of 300 times, I have, uh, so the size changes. Okay, and so this is, um, uh, might be uh, something to, to think about. So characters are uh, occurring uh, even if they are the same, they uh, occupy many. Okay, while numbers, they, if they replicate, they are considered just uh, the first one that you provide, and the other just uh, as object, uh, just the the outside of the object, not the inside. So. I don't know if I um, made it clear. But anyway, we can use object size to both X and Y, object size, uh, to, to X and Y, to see the size of both. And we can use it to all this. And then there is another uh, interesting thing. This is all uh, rep, so short, for alternative representation. For example, if I change within numbers, if I use one to three or one to a thousand, one to ten thousand, one to the size of my object doesn't change. Because zero replicates itself, zero, 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 zero. And so the size of the object is always, is always the same. I have this um, object size, and this is my vector, and this one to two. And now, this is my second object, same six hundred uh, six eighty bytes. And these, these are now ta uh, a, a thousand um, objects, numbers, which are all, so this object is quite, you know, bigger. There are hundred, uh, a thousand, a uh, thousand elements inside. It does occupy this, this same memory of an object of three. And if I, if it is scroll, uh, it's exactly the same thing. So if I have 10,000, same, same object, same, same uh, size. And so this is, a, I found this quite interesting. I don't know. How how uh, I, we so I how to, to you know when you build a function maybe you you might and, and you have uh, this is why maybe when you do have doubles or numbers within tables maybe um, so you, you you shouldn't care about that I don't know but well, anyway. Um, and so I found this, those things very interesting. Do you, do you have any questions? So, yeah, I'm going to say I'm still struggling with some of this a little bit, and I don't know if anybody else 
can sort of explain uh, one, like, I think it's, if you just go to the like exercises, I guess, uh, number three in the exercises, 2.4, right? So I didn't really understand why, like A is, let me run this in my, I, I kind of, my own code over here. So A is a numeric vector, right? With whatever that is, a million elements or something, um, right? But the list is just referring to that vector twice. And if I understood it right, when you have a list, the si because it's just the size of it, it's just the reference to the value, like to the object, not the object itself. Like I expected um, the object size for B to be smaller. And I, I, I'm i just not quite getting this. Does anybody else understand that? <laughs> like why? Like, I, I don't get why does the first time you refer to it like it's the entire the size of the whole object and then every time you refer to it again it just adds a tiny bit because it's just referring to that first object in the list like is that what it's doing like what is, i don't get it so anybody does does my question even make sense to anybody Is Anybody a. understand it better than me? <laughs> so, the, the size of A is H megabyte. Right. So, uh, B, which is going to list A and A. And, yeah. 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 So if they if yeah. they were yeah they double so size of B is now it's it's actually yeah. yeah I think if we carried it out to more digits maybe there's a slight difference but like I don't get it I don't get why. An object that has whatever it is of million elements is the same size as a list that just refers to that object twice. Yeah, I don't know because uh, there, there was um a uh, in the chapter it's mentioned. Yeah, I've like read that yeah. section a bazillion times and I still don't get it. Yeah, like it says um. Since the elements of lists are references to values, the size of a list might be much smaller than you expect, right? So that's what I was saying. Like the, the, the elements of the list are just references to that vector, not the vector itself, right? So why yeah. would it be because bigger are, than... You, I think... They are just the same, so it counts. That's um, for, for example, for 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 numbers. So it basically counts the first. It doesn't matter how long is the number. It counts the first and the last number. It doesn't care what's in what. what well, what that's if you have a thing. sequence, but this isn't a sequence. Right. Yeah. This is not a sequence. But uh, as as they they are exactly the same. So if I what what if I use uh, if I do object size, uh, what if I create a a, a, a third vector? This uh, another one. Um, it's out. Then. I use the object size. Okay. What? Oh yeah, kilobytes. See, it's a lot smaller. Yeah. 
yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, it makes sense. It's actually a thousand times smaller, like because it's it's um a factor of of a thousand uh less values in it, right? Because you did a thousand values instead of a million values. Um, so I guess I feel better though. It seems like nobody else is understanding it better than I am. <laughs> nobody else can, gets it either. I'm not the only one. <laughs> can you? Uh, uh, what What you said that, as you said, you you pointed out right. That was a sequence. Okay, the sequence. Huh? If this yeah. is a sequence, this is these are random numbers. So right. the sequence. It, it, uh, it says, uh, no, right, it's only storing the first and last number. So every sequence right. is the same size. That I got. That I understand. It's this other part. This When you take a, a vector, right, that our unif function is creating a vector with a million values in it, right? But then you just refer to that vector twice in a list. How come that's the same size or about the same size? But but this this happen because they are the same. What if they are different? So this is a a. What if it's a b and b is different of a? Well, try make it a c since you have c as another vector. Okay. Like what happens if you did a c there? If I understood it right, I thought like AC should be about the same size uh, as AA because. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. D is a list of A and C. Mm -hmm. And then my object size B is now. So I get what I'm guessing is what I said before. I think maybe like the first time you put it in the list, it's like the whole size of that object. And then each additional time you refer to it, it's just referring. Uh -huh. it's, it's just like a tiny bit bigger because it's referring to the same object again. Is that? So can you specify again what you were expecting? Sorry, I know you've been going over this. So like well, so, how, how large would you have thought B is the issue, right? That's the first. B is the issue. I thought it was going to be a much smaller size because I thought it's just storing two references. It's not storing I see. two objects, right? I, the way they explain the way a list works, it's just storing the reference. I see. I think, um, I think it's still... returning the even though it's still pointing to the same thing i guess there's like nuance in this language that i hadn't even thought about but it's still returning the size of the object it points to that's whether or not <laughs> yeah. yeah but i think that that's i mean if you're there's the everything is if you're gonna go down this thing where if you're going to go down this rabbit hole, then everything is just the name. Then what would it mean to return the size of a name of an object? If if an object, you know, you always want the size of the object. And the interesting thing is that the object can, if there's repetition in the object, then there's that duplicity is accounted for and not, but it would be boring to just, if you're going to, to like just ever return the size of a pointer, right? Like that's, right. that would be always uninformative if we're gonna understand uh, names and objects as different things, so. You know, I just read it again. I'm looking at it again and I think I am, I think what I was assuming is correct. I think it, 
has the size of the object once, and then every time you refer to it again, it's just adding a tiny bit of uh, size to it because it's it's each additional one is just referring to the first one, basically, right? Because now that I'm looking again, it says that in the book, why it's it's not um so in this case it would be B, right? Would only be uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm going back and forth between the exercise and the and the book text. Um basically they had an a same example now I'm looking at in the book, they had X and Y. And Y was X three times in a list, right? So it's similar to this exercise. Mm -hmm. And it says y is only 80 bytes bigger than x. And that's the size of an empty list with three elements. So now I think I get it. Yes. I think what okay, I was right. assuming is correct. That, that the, okay. Yeah. We we have the solution. The exercises. I think I found it. Uh, uh, Earlier, I don't find it anymore. Uh, predict the output of the following yeah. code. Okay, so this is uh, a length zero vector as four bytes. Okay, so this is okay. It starts from from the very empty list double in character. So they both 48 bytes. They all of them. Mm -hmm. they, all of them are 48 bytes. Then I, it adds um, a number. A double one. If I add a double, double one is 56. Double two is 64. And then a million doubles should take that much. But then a list. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. See, underneath that code block now, it says, therefore, no additional memory is required for the second list element. So the first one. Uh, the first element is the same size as the vector, and the second one doesn't add more memory. Got it. Okay. Because it's just referring to the first one, yeah. basically. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Let me see if I have Thank you. Uh, anything. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to have a look at a um, um, few more things. I'm not uh, spending too much time on this uh, representation because I don't get them. Um, so these are objects, as you can see. So this is the name of the object. So this is what's inside the object and, and so on. So I'm, I'm not spending much time, but I like to have a look at the loops, for example. So how do you make a loop? Okay, I, let, let's imagine we do this data frame. Okay, this is X, it's a data frame, um, random numbers with five columns. And it's, it looks like this, okay, this X. Then I uh, create a median vector, vector of medians, which looks like this. Okay. Um, now, if I want to um, uh, build a, a for loop, I need to use um, to 
this is the four. Okay, it's enough that I do four and then enter and then uh, are related to this structure. Okay, for, for the for loop. I need to use the double square bracket. So basically, I uh, from each element of X, uh, I consider the difference with the median value. I have these five values. Something happened, I can not run. Okay. Um, apparently my R is stuck somewhere. Okay. Okay, this is the data frame. I have this median ve median vector. Okay, now I have five elements by median value. And then I want to be I like to build a for loop, which is the difference from each value of x um, from uh, and and the in the, the median. Okay, uh, we have five columns and five median values by each by each mean. I run this and then have a look at yeah. Exchange it so, but to make it work, I need to use the double bracket. If I use just one, it doesn't release the the value. Okay, this is one more thing I wanted to to mention. So this is a uh, very important to use to point at the element inside, at the single element inside the data frame. And then uh, to conclude, because we have a very, very few minutes left, is uh, th there is a nice introduction to the to functions. Uh, and so to make a function, you just type fun. Um, and then click enter. I don't know my computer uh, before. But anyway, when you do, you, you just write fun and then click enter and it releases this structure. This is a. Uh, and. Um, what a function does is basically wrapping uh, objects uh, inside. So if you assign uh, or object, I mean single object or other function, or uh, and then you can have a look um, at the the identification, and and you find. Um, with trace mem, uh, the memory, and the identification now. Um, okay, so um, th there's yes. more, yeah, there's more to see, but basically these are the most, uh, you know, the things that are selected. I don't know if you have any other. So there is this GC function that uh, you might uh, aware of uh, just to clean uh, the unused uh, memory. You can run it and it cleans up and you have it on R as well, uh, on our studio, for example. Um, here in the environment tab, you know, where this uh, amount of memory is loaded when you work it. 
you can click here and see unused memory and it's basically using the gc uh, function to clean up the um, unused uh, memory uh, and then uh, there are other other functions so they quite you know uh, straightforward and then if you want to um, have any questions or want to point out to any other arguments? I found it quite interesting that it says that there is never actually any need to call GC yourself because when you do it in our studio, it then looks like it's freeing up lots of memory, um, which should be helpful. But it says, yeah, you never actually need to do it. My understanding yeah. of that. Is the... <laughs> oh, okay, I was just gonna say. I thought my understanding of that was that um, it. I thought it's supposed to automatically trigger garbage collection for anything that can be garbage collected, whenever you are in need of more memory, so that if you need it and it's available. Sorry, if you need it and there is something that can be cleaned out, it will do it itself. So that was my understanding for why it's never actually needed, but I could be wrong. As in it should just run it itself if it needs to. Yeah. And if it can't, if you need something and it can't, then you run, you running it versus it running it is essentially the same thing because it's not like you're using memory before. Yeah. Like having a clean memory doesn't actually do anything for you until you're trying to until you're trying to use it and if you're trying to use it it will clean it up so that was how i interpreted that but i don't know if that's exactly true even 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 if when when you restart r you restart the garbage collection You restart R, cleans up the, some of the things that you were using. Okay, so um, there's a, this nice. Uh, uh, um, Representations of uh, many things. We have a uh, talk um, about our lung and the environment. But so this was just like an introduction of everything, the object part. Um, um, we we will go back to each of these elements more um, uh, with more details within the the following chapter. 